So today I have this high demand 2024 Chevy Equinox LS and the main reason why I'm trying to compare this car to any existing uh, Equinox because I want to see is it really a lot of changes for 2024 and is it really worth to buy this small SUV available everywhere and there is a million of cars uh, probably made already but is there really a lot of difference between the previous body previous not facelifted car and this 2024 or not and is it really that spacious car inside and it's good for your family for yourself to is a daily driving car and this 1.5 turbo engine what's going on in this car what's really changed and what's the price for this car you're gonna see it later on and i'm gonna tell you and show you some other cool stuff about 2024 chevy equinox let's go shiny shiny plastic Black mirror fascist, obsessed capitalist Are you feeling guilty Catholic? Pretty pretty, picturesque Facebook status Happy family and happy marriage Like a magazine So what's the huge difference between this one and the previous body? Honestly, I do have a 2020 right now, but it's in the shop And the craziest part about that 2020 Chevy Equinox That car has only 61,000 miles for 2020 And what's happened, basically, that car smoking as hell And the engine needs to be replaced but the price for the used engine it's ridiculously low so i don't have to do the head job or whatever any other stuff and buy the parts it's just super cheap i didn't know they so cheap so 1.5 turbo engine on this car is just junk in my opinion until 60,000 miles you do have a powertrain warranty so basically something gonna happen it's gonna be covered but after that that car is now worth it to buy because it's gonna get misfire it's gonna get smoking problem it's gonna get something else so it's not good engine at all and for some reason they doing it on this car already for four years so 2018 first this body came out and it's the third generation of this equinox they still didn't improve it so basically 1.5 used to be before 2.0 engine this 1.5 has 175 horsepower that's more than enough for you as a driver i mean as a daily commuter in the city uh you don't need more horsepower but they used to have a diesel engine they used to have 2.0 engine but for some reason they stayed with 1.5 turbo engine and i don't like it at all if it's after 60,000 miles. Before that, it's good. So what they got improved? Uh, LED headlights, they cool at night. You can see what's going on in the front of the car. Before it was a, uh, it was not LED lights. It was a regular halogen or some of the better options. It was a xenon light. So that's probably basically it. So from 2018 up to right now, they changed the headlights and front bumper and the tail lights they are changed so i think they got more colors available right now not i think they got more colors available right now to choose so basically blue one it was not available before and the design of this wheels i mean the rims itself they changed it a little bit but i think it got more uglier than before the car itself it's pretty good the msrp for this car especially for this one because it's a less it was twenty seven thousand nine ninety five dollars so basically it's not only prices you can see on the used car lot when they doing six nine ninety nine or seven nine ninety nine the new car stores they are doing the same so and what's the secret of those prices if you didn't know before six nine 99 it's not the seven but it's not six so basically you're going to the car you checking it it's like six nine ninety nine but it's not six thousand and it's not seven thousand but it's closer to seven thousand that's kind of trick but i didn't know the new car stores they are doing it but they are so 27 995 you're gonna pay for this car lease option it's super cheap if you are the member of the costco or something else if you do have a chevy in your family you can get this car even cheaper but 499 zero down payment lease i think it's just insanely cool price for this car why not so you don't have to think about maintenance or you don't think to you don't have to think about something gonna happen with the engine transmission because it's a brand new car you do have a warranty nothing gonna happen if something gonna happen they're gonna cover it but take my advice and sell this car before that warranty expired and if you buy in the used car just pay more attention or pay 
somewhere at the shop so they can do the diagnostic for you and check if the engine kind of pre-existing condition or it's still running great so it's kind of tricky on that engine transmission with this chevy it's not only equinox the other chevy like a cruise they used to have the same problem they still do have it but overall it is a cool car it's a small suv for the city that's more than enough again to do the grocery you can put the seats back and do a lot of stuff put a lot of stuff in the car and just drive you know wherever you want to go ls option i mean ls edition maybe it's not the coolest one i would say go with lt maybe but still ls led lights serious exam backup camera and we do have an emergency braking system plus a line keeper that's more than enough again for $27,000 car and it's just cool kind of $27,000 not the big deal uh, so besides the facelift on the front end and the tail lights there is nothing really changing the car the seats are same all the switches are same uh the cluster and the multimedia it is the same engine same as it was before i don't think they did some improvements and it's gonna last longer i think it's gonna be exactly the same stuff and what's again interesting about 1.5 turbo engine from the chevy some of the cars i did see the smoking or misfire in around 40,000 miles so you never know I don't know what's going on is the pistons bad or the rings or it's all together because sometimes i see the piston itself getting cracked on the side valves getting bad and on and on and on so it's a good choice for the chevy to put 1.5 on the small suv car what gonna drive every day in the city and uh, sit in the traffic for sure it's not so i think from my experience this car has a huge problem with the cooling system so basically it's not cooling enough that's why the pistons getting overheating and getting cracked or the side of the piston getting uh getting cracked and that's it the car losing compression or it starts smoking a lot and on and on and on again so let's see we got the car we got the key that simple key open close nothing else so we're getting inside there is a push start button available it is cool there is no climate control but it's kind of suitable i mean for 2024 i think it's not the it's not that modern i would say but it's still cool auto headlights a line keeper and emergency braking system so basically if somebody gonna uh try to stop in front of you and you cannot see what's going on the car gonna stop itself what about the quality what about the materials there is no quality i mean there is no kind of metal the shit metal is so thin i wouldn't trust this car the whole family what about the plastics all the plastics right now they kind of soft you know nah not so many sounds those door and the dashboard producing so what i do like about the modern cars inside there is a led lights so dome light now it's led everywhere and it's kind of cool it's a soft light and uh, you can use it even while you're driving it one more cool thing about 2024 car besides uh usb-c i have a just regular usb port that's what i need i have a million different wires as a usb port why i need usb-c and right now for some cars like i'm gonna review some other new stuff we got uh i need to buy those usb-c to iphone wires why like why it's so simple to put usb and everybody can use their own old wires but not anymore so the stereo system the screen it is still same as a 2020 as the one i have the backup camera quality it is kind of same stuff chip edition but we do have a serious exam that's what i like about this car what about the steering wheel we have a power steering wheel it is electric and it's not adjustable it's not the kia or hyundai so you cannot adjust the way you drive in it like the normal drive or sport one or really soft as uh, as you want to drive it in the city or sitting in the traffic not available what about the compartments there is a lot of cup holders like everywhere there is one two in the doors there is two in the middle and a couple more on the back the glove box it's not that huge but those pockets like the one in the middle right there 
it is useful uh, your armrest has a huge box inside so there is a lot of stuff can be pulled in what else i can say about the interior it is kind of kind of kind of kind of it is a suv for twenty seven thousand dollars and it is a brand new it's not used so that's more than enough option and more than enough room for you and for your family but still there is a lot of questions about this car why they still using the same engine without any improvements i'm pretty sure sixty thousand miles that's all this engine can do why 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 six years they still doing the same kind of stuff and it's uh, worst so the room on the back again it's kind of it's kind of enough wow i have a two usb charges on the back not usb-c just regular usb seats are comfortable the materials are cool i like it like the uber uber car yeah if i'm gonna call the uber and this car gonna come to pick me up i'm gonna be more than happy because room on the back more than enough and all materials they're not smelling bad and they feel okay what i don't like about suvs small one big one doesn't matter the door itself the back door i cannot open it all the way to 90 degree why what's the point to leave it like that again i want to put the child seat right i want to put my kids or some grocery or some other kind of stuff but my door it's not opening all the way i don't know that's that's the question for engineers not for the consumers i mean as a consumer i need this door to be open all the way to 90 degrees so it's going to be more comfortable for me as a consumer to use it so the trunk area that's pretty much big there is a lot of room uh, again you buying the cheapest uv i'm not asking about the quality i'm not asking about some kind of stuff i can find in the mercedes for 60 or 50 thousand that's 25 30 thousand dollar suv that's super cool i would say not so cool but it's nice let's say this car it's nice right so there is a full size donut it's not the full size wheel it's just a donut what about the lunch time lunch time in this car it's going to be more than enough space for two of you when it's raining outside just open the trunk and enjoy the view and your lunch time what else i can say the step it's kind of high there is no step the the floor the floor is let's see if it's straight it is so you can drop the seats and it's pretty much straight so there is a lot of stuff you can throw in the car or just sleep if you need it if you have to but the floor in the trunk is kind of high so you need to ask someone to help you out put some heavy stuff in the car that's pretty much it about the room about the size of this suv this uv itself like i say it is a nice car it's not beautiful it's not amazing it's just a nice car for cheap payment to get it with warranty for sixty thousand miles so that's the simple car easy to use a lot of options not a lot but all the options they are understandable there is nothing to complain about it because you buy the car for 27 28,000 okay 28,000 brand new 2024 SUV and uh, performance for this car basically they are saying 0 to 60 175 horsepower engine supposed to do for six seconds i'm just going to drive it a little bit over there and see if it's really feelable so the car going 0 60 for six seconds but one of the point why we are filming right now kind of at night because i was trying to understand if the led headlights they are really improved and they really make sense on this one because on the previous body those halogen lights it just super useful uh it's just super useless headlights on the chevy this one this one doing good the so the suspension you can feel it right away it is a cheap suspension there's a mcpherson strut and springs 
I don't think you can expect good control on a high speed on the freeway in this car, especially if you load it. If you have a lot of stuff in the trunk, there is five, four, five people sitting in the car, it's gonna be 65, 70 miles per hour. That's your max speed for comfortable driving. Other than, other than that, it's gonna be uncomfortable for sure. So as a guy who's working with 90% of the time with used cars, new cars, it's kind of rare for me. I don't like it that much, but again, if you do like it, please put some comments below. If you do have the same car as this and you have experience with misfire or some any kind of other stuff, whatever going on with that kind of improved engine for six years and probably five years more, please let me know. And again, same time, let me know if you like review about the new cars, if you like the opinion from the guy who's working with used one all the time. Uh, just Put your comments below, I'm gonna for sure read it and answer you maybe later on. I'm gonna start getting more new 2024, 2025, 2023 cars just to show it and maybe drive it and you might gonna like it more. Thank you so much as always uh, for watching that and thank you so much for your time uh, you spending with me right now. I'll see you guys soon in my next videos. Thank you.